Yo, what is up YouTube? My name's Aaron and today I am going to make this video for you guys. I've been looking forward to doing this for quite some time and we are going to be doing the top 10 things that make you a better zombies player. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a game inside of this. So listen to all 10 and let's say you're like 10 out of 10. That means you are the best zombie players for every so for every single thing that I say. If you do that, just mark down something so you could be either 5 out of 10, 7 out of 10, whatever it be. Let me know down in the comment section just so I know what type of zombie player you are. So let's get right into this. So number one, if you are a good zombie player, you are not afraid to open a door. But with that means you know which doors to open. So you got to open the correct doors. So everyone knows some maps, there's some doors that you should not open because it messes with the spawns and people could go down as they're trying to run their trains. And, you know, if it's the first, second, third round, whatever time the team decides to leave, that person is not afraid to open up the door. To shell out the 750, the 1000, the 1250, because they know eventually they'll have enough points. Now, it does not go with a smart play. So, like, if your teammate already has Jug and has enough to get the door, and you don't have Jug, so you can get Jug, he can get the door, you know, that person would be a smart player to go ahead and open up the door. But this is just personal, not playing solo, playing with maybe some randoms online, and, you know, it's good. Next up, picks everyone up the smart way and the correct way. So, as you guys know, if you're playing in Publix, I don't know about you guys, but if I play zombies in Publix, I love getting revives. It's my most favorite thing to do, as you guys can see in this video, so it'll beast at it, and people just go down for me, and I pick them up. That sounded, sounded a little wrong, but... That's just what I like doing. Whenever I'm not going for high rounds, going for challenges, I just like casually playing Publix and just reviving as many people as I can. But with that, I know the correct time to pick someone up. So if a horde's standing on top of them, obviously you don't just rush over there and pick them up. And you don't let them die out because everyone hates spectating. And before you know it, if the round's long, they will back out just so they get to play again. So keep that in mind. Plus, they lose all their weapons and perks. And that just sucks for everyone. I think the correct way is to just run the zombies around and then go for them. Don't kill the zombies or grab a nuke, grab an insta-kill. Something that will protect you while you pick them up. Next up, number three you're not a box hawk. That is the number one thing I would almost say that like every bad zombie player does. I can tell how good a zombie player is just by that initial box or if there's a fire sale, oh my god, noobs will come out of the woodworks. It doesn't matter where they're at, they will go and hit a box. Even if they die, they'll bleed out. They'll try to hit that box because you know they want that wonder weapon. That's all they want. That's all they can see past. And you know, if you're a good zombie player, you're not gonna hog box. You're gonna get your weapon, enough to get you your perks, and then you're gonna go back to the box later. Next up, which is number four, Perks before box. Now this goes, there's a little bit of a clause before we get into that. So first off, you do need a weapon to get you some points. So whether that be the Bowie Knife, which is the smartest play because you will make every single dime back and then some. Or hitting the box, which could be tricky. And now that's the reason why I'm saying perks before box. Because like me, depending on if I know that the game is going to go how I go and the strategy involves me hitting the box once, I'll go ahead and get it out of the way. Or I'll just buy a wall weapon that's pretty good, get my points up, get some perks, then go to a box. Next up working as a team so if your team's trying to do the uh not really the easter egg but like on shadows of evil your team's trying to do pack a punch help them out don't be you know going around ending the rounds and stuff like that help your team out help them do what they want to do just remember all you're there for are the revives or you're there as an actual team and you're trying to help them next up number six plays safe now i cannot tell you how many times i've watched noobs run from one area into someone else's area like as you know if you're all four running hordes everyone's trying to run in their own place and if someone runs into that not only can they die they can get you down too and that just sucks so make sure you guys are playing safe don't run into someone else's horde don't run out and do something stupid that you know that probably will get you down like 
also goes with saying back up to the fire cell play safe if you know you're not gonna be able to hit that box don't hit that box or just hit like one time run away see what you got and if it's something good run over there and pick it up and kill the horde behind you next up number seven does not rage quit andy i'm sorry i gotta call you out for this one you're definitely a nine out of ten on this list because you rage quit all the time hopefully you're watching this but you know if you go down I know, man. I know the feeling of rage quitting and just wanting to get out of that game. But it sucks for the other people. And especially whenever a noob rage quits, you know you hate it because that's one less person that you have to revive or you get to revive. Next up, healthy wallet. This is the number one tip I tell anyone if they're starting out in zombies. Once you get a gun, any kind of a gun, and you get your perks, whether you get four perks, two or three, one, honestly... Make sure you have enough if you go down again, because we all do go down. It doesn't matter how good of a zombie player you are, you are going to go down every single game you play, unless you quit out, which goes back up to the do not rage quit. So, make sure you have enough points to go and get your jug. That's the one thing. As long as you have 2,500 2, points, you'll be good. Um, it doesn't matter if you're like, you got the wonder weapon, you got all your perks, and now you're trying to get monkeys or little arnies. Don't use all of your points all the way down to nothing. Use it down to about 3,000 and just enough for you to get jug and get you back on your feet. Otherwise, you're probably going to keep going down again unless you, you just know you're a tank and you're not going to go down until you get 2,500 points. Next up, number nine, knows when you are about to go down and calls it like if you ever play with me and i'm talking to you i will say oh i'm about to go down and honestly you can watch i think my video from yesterday chad even said oh i'm about to go down and i looked over and he was all right two or three seconds later he went down what that does if you're playing with another good person it allows them to know when what they need to do like in that situation there was nothing i could have done i might watching the video again i might have tried to loop back again but the margo was just too close like i looked maybe if he was back another five feet from where he was i could have enough time to loop back because the zombies would have been faster and i might have slid past the margo and got the revive but it you don't know how great it is whenever someone calls out they're about to go down and they don't it, I mean, even if it's you, it's just a good feeling because you know you just did something clutch. Like, you got out of death. You cheated death, and it feels good. And plus, you they're like, whoa, you didn't go down. Like, yeah, I know, I'm good. And it feels good. You guys need to do it. That's the one thing. Even if you're playing, like, solo, practice being like, oh, no, I'm about to go down. Like, oh, I'm down, I'm down. Never mind, never mind, I got it. Just practice that, and it will make you better when playing with a team. And number 10 this is the biggest one. Hoard and cutbacks. Now, hoarding, everyone knows. You walk the zombies around in a circle, and it's a big stereotype that... I wouldn't say stereotype, but it's a big thing that people think about zombies as players. Like, oh, you're just walking around in circles. No, you will get trapped in circles, and whenever you're hoarding, you should not run. People say, oh, you're just running around in a circle. And whenever I watch people hoard, they're walking or running, and then they turn around and aim in to shoot. No, whenever you're hoarding, you need to be looking, you just need to be walking, walking forward all the time, never looking back, never walking backwards, and whenever you're ready to shoot, turn around just a little bit, just turn the horde into a tight, tight circle, and shoot hip fire into the middle of it, or if you have the wonder weapon, you can turn around, look down and shoot the ground. Next up is the cutbacks, we're still at number 10. Cutbacks is where you're walking in a circle and you go on the outside around your circle So it's kind of like a C shape and then back around kind of like a little s uh, and It helps you out a lot once you learn how to cut back while you're hoarding and walking while you're hoarding It's gonna make your zombies playing skills that much better You're not gonna go down as much like if you see death you know when to turn around and walk on the outside. Always leave yourself enough room. Never walk the horde up so close to a wall that you cannot cut back. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you guys know what you are. Let me look at this list real quick and I'll tell you what I am. Um, so first off, never afraid to open up a door. I hate opening up doors, guys. It's just, I know it makes me a good player if I go ahead and do it, but... 
I would much rather have my points and watch noobs do it because then they will not have points and I'll be able to pick them up like you guys probably saw in this video. Next up picks everyone up. That is me, not a box hog. After I get all my stuff and I'm trying to get the wonder weapon, if the wonder weapon's in the box and I do not want noobs getting it, I will use the box as many times as it takes. But if a person did just get revived or just got picked up from actually bleeding out i will let them hit the box trying to get something uh next up working as a team i do that play safe obviously does not rage quit i have a tendency to rage quit sometimes healthy wallet yes uh no i always call it out and i can hoard and i can do my cutback so i'd give myself a nine out of a ten or possibly even an eight out of ten if we want to go into a percent scale a 90 or an 80 so there you guys have it. That's what makes you a good zombies player. At least I think so. Tomorrow will be the top 10 bad things or top 10 things that make you a noob or a bad zombie player. Hope you guys enjoy this. My name's Aaron and I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video.